Hello everyone, welcome to today's video on markups and markdowns. We are in the unit of solving percent problems. Um, so we're going to be building on the percent proportion and the percent equation where we can solve those to find the part, the whole, or the percent. But now we're just applying this to basically finance questions, money. Um, we're talking about markup or markdown. Those are going to be financial applications of percent problems. So before we get started today, a lot of our work is going to be looking at word problems and identifying what is the part, what is the whole, and what is the percent in this real world example. So first let's define markup, and that's going to be an example of a real world part. Um, a markup is the amount of increase in a price um, from an original, an original cost. So the price is going up. If I'm a store and I buy something from my distributor, like the person who sells me the items, for $10, and then I resell it to the customer for $15, there's a $5 markup because I pay, I pay $10 for it, and then I'm charging someone else $15. So there's an increase in price from the original cost of $5. Okay, so that increase in price is going to be a markup, and it's an example of a part when we're solving these questions because it's, it's a part of the whole of that original cost, as we'll see. Okay, and a markdown is what you'd expect. It's a decrease in price from an original amount. So I have a price, I have something I'm selling, and then I have to put it on sale because no one's buying it, or I just put it on sale because I want to. So that would be a markdown. I'm bringing the price down, and the markdown, again, would be the amount of decrease, the amount that I am bringing the cost down. And then the amount of a tip and amount of a tax, those will also be some real-world parts, as we've already seen a little bit so far. Um, and these aren't necessarily different, like an amount of a tip and a tax, those are type of markups. Um, then we have real world percents. So in the markup markdown world, we'll have percent markups and then percent markdown. Sorry about that. So that's going to be the percent of increase or decrease from an original cost. So when I had that $10 thing and then I sold it for $15, that's actually going to be a 50% markup. Uh, we could do the math to figure that out. But that's the percent of increase from the original uh, from the original price. It's going up by 50% of, of the original cost. Okay, um, and then also we have the percent of a tip or a percent of a tax, as we've seen some. Those are also examples, real-world examples of percents. And they do somewhat connect to percent markups. Okay, and then finally we have some real world holes. So generally in these questions for markup and markdowns, I want you to think of holes as the original price, or the original cost of an item. Um, and then we're going to be marking things up and marking things down, but it's the original price that we're going to consider our hole. Um, so examples more specifically is the subtotal of a meal. So the cost of the food before you add tax, before you add tip. It could be the sticker price of a car. That means like you're, they're advertising this price, but then there's going to be fees, there's going to be taxes, there's going to be stuff they add on top of that. Um, or maybe they'll give you discounts and it'll go down, but it's what they're advertising. And then the face value of an item, that's really just another word for the original cost, the sticker price, what they're advertising. So we have example one, find the sale price of $230 sneakers with a 30% markdown. Okay, and then you can see I wrote the percent equation here, which is what I'm going to use this time. Um, I could also use the percent proportion. Okay, so again, the hard stuff here is going to be figuring out what we're given and what we need to find out. So we're trying to find the sale price of sneakers that cost $230 originally and then have a 30% markdown. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do to the side here before I label anything is I'm, I'm trying to figure out the sale price, sale price. So I need to understand what does sale price mean? Well, the sale price is going to be equal to the original cost of the item minus the markdown. Or again, markdown means the amount of the decrease. So I'm taking the original cost and then how much am I marking down that item or what am I saving I'm not spending? That's how I'm gonna get the sale price. Okay, so that's gonna be important to keep in mind um, as I'm working through this. So I'm trying to find the sale price. 
So I'm going to need to know the original and the markdown cost in order to find the sale price. Now the original I already know. The original is my $230. And we said that the original was going to be our whole. We always think of the original as our whole. Okay, so in this problem, I'm going to be multiplying by my original. Okay, so I know that's 230. Then I, of course, have my percent, which is pretty easy to see always, a 30% markdown. So I will eventually put in 30 there, but the percent part in this case is really going to be that percent markdown. And then the last thing I have is the part. So what's going to be the part in these markdown markup questions? Well, here it's a markdown problem because I have a 30% markdown. I'm trying to find the sale price. Um, I can flip back over and I see real world parts would be markdowns, the amount of decrease. That's going to be important here because to find the sale price, I need the original cost and the amount of the markdown. Okay, so that's going to be my part here, the markdown which again is the amount of decrease. So now let's substitute in the information that we're given and then find what we're looking for after that. So I substituted in what I was given. We know there's a 30% markdown, so I'm gonna put 30 in our percent section in the numerator. Um, and then the original price or the whole of these sneakers is $230. So what I need to find is that markdown because once I find my markdown, I'm gonna be able to find the sale price. Okay, so at this stage, um, this is pretty straightforward. If we have a calculator, it's super easy. If we don't have a calculator, we are still totally fine. We can do that, this just with a little bit more work. Just have to multiply these numbers. Um, I will go off to the side. I'll just multiply it as fractions. This is one option. Multiply the numerators. We're doing 230 times 30. Do that, we're gonna get all zeros. We go down three times zero is zero, three times three is nine, and three times two is six. Okay, so we'll get 6,900 in the numerator. Then we would divide by 100. When you divide by 100, remember we're moving the decimal place over two to the left. Or you can see here, it's like our zeros are canceling away because we're dividing by the tens twice. Um, so we get that our markdown is $69. Okay, so that is the markdown. So how much we are saving or decreasing from the original price. Thus, our sale price is equal to the original cost of $230. And then we're going to subtract $69. And when we do that, we will get $161 is the sale price. So there was a lot that went on there, but really the hard work was substituting in what we were given, figuring out where everything goes. So once we were able to figure out that our percent markdown was 30%, our $230, that was our whole, and then we were trying to find our markdown amount, we could pretty easily do that and get $69 as our markdown. The amount of money we are saving, we are not spending, or from the perspective of the business owner that they are not getting, um, they're decreasing their price. So thus the final price is going to be the original, 230 minus $69, and we get $161 as our sale price. Okay? All right, let's look at another example. Josiah buys concert tickets from his friend. He pays $80 for two tickets. When he gets the tickets, he sees that each ticket has a face value of $55. A, how much of a markdown did his friend give Josiah? And B, what is the percent markdown? Round to the nearest percent. So step one, we need to find the markdown that Josiah gave, that Josiah's friend gave him. So that means how much less is Josiah paying for these tickets compared to the original price? Now you have to read problems carefully because there's a really important word here that could mix this up. He pays $80 for two tickets, two tickets. Okay, so then how much does he pay for one ticket? Well, he pays $80 for two, then that would mean we can divide by two. He pays $40 for 
for one ticket. Okay, so Josiah is paying $40 per ticket, but when he gets the tickets, he sees that each ticket has a face value of $55. So that's the original price, the sticker price, what's advertised. That's $55. So $55 is the original. He's paying $40 for it. So how much money is he not paying? What is the amount of decrease the amount of decrease in the original part. 55 minus 40 is $15. So that's going to be in blue. That's gonna be my mark down. Right, the amount of money we're not paying, the amount of decrease. Okay, so that's actually our answer for A. And then we need to use that to answer B. What was the percent markdown? Okay. So we've already found our part, our markdown. We're trying to find the percent markdown. So we know that's what we normally mark up as green. That's our percent. And then we need the original. So what's the original cost of one ticket in this problem? Yep, the original cost of one ticket is $55. It's our face value sticker price. That's what we think of as our whole. Okay, so that's going to be our whole. We're trying to find our percent and we have our part, our markdown. So now just go ahead, substitute it in. Um, again, you can substitute into the, again, I'm going to substitute into the percent proportion and solve for the percent. So here's our setup. $15 is my part. $55 is my whole, and I'm trying to find the percent. Um, we are going to round to the nearest percent, so you might need to round a little bit as you're doing these calculations with the calculator. Um, and so go ahead and do that. Find our percent, solve this proportion. So when you solve that proportion, you should have gotten 27% about. Again, we're rounding here. Um, you can see the work. I ended up doing it the kind of like proportion equivalent ratio method. 55 times 1.81 repeating equals 100. So you could round, again, we're rounding um, to just 1.81 and we will get about 27%. So there's about a 27% markdown of the original cost or the face value of that ticket. Um, so he's saving $15 from his friend per ticket, which was nice. And he's also saving 27% of the original cost. The percent markdown and markup is very important in finance, even if it doesn't seem like it is in like these small situations, because if you have a big company and maybe you're marking up chapstick by 10%, but you're marking up snicker bars by 25%, then when you're trying to figure out how can I make more money, how can I maximize my profits, you might say, oh, well, I'm successfully selling snicker bars at a 25% markup, but I'm only making a 10% profit or markup on chapstick. No, let me make that higher. Right, so it's not just about the money, it's about relatively how much more will people pay. So now we just have the final you try. Um, give it a try, I will project it afterwards. Okay, great job, great effort. So for A, we get the markdown amount. The amount that we are saving here is $165. The original cost of the item is 550, so then we do 550 minus the markdown, 165, and you get $385 as the sale price, the amount the customer will pay. Okay, so for B, the store bought that item for $350. What's the markup or profit they made on the item from the cost they paid for it to the sale price they sold it for? Right, so ultimately they put this item on sale, but they're still making a profit from how much they bought. So that's what we're seeing here in B. So they ultimately sold the item for $385, but they bought the item for $350. So we can subtract that um, or, or count up. 385 minus 350 is $35. So there's a $35 markup or profit that the store ultimately made on this item. All right, great job, everyone.